This is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and today we have with us Louis Kelly, Louis Kelly, who is a light coach, and he's going to tell us tell us how you became a light coach, Louis. Okay, well, uh, first of all, hi, my name is Louis Kelly. I uh, I also go by the name of Lou K, and uh, I'm a light coach, and uh, I became uh, more introduced on the path of uh, enlightenment about 10 years ago when something uh, tragic happened in my life and I said well normal ways of dealing with this in society are like asking teachers or asking uh, um, parents and what's whatsoever we know in our general spectrum of knowledge and they didn't have any of the answers so I turned to uh, Buddhism uh, about 10 years ago and uh, I've been mostly seeking enlightenment ever since so that's that's what has brought me to the path of life coach oh okay yeah. okay and it's working for you yeah well it, it has helped me to uh to really put in perspective uh what i want in my life you know because uh if we just say we want material things well you know even the people who have made it very high in the material world don't always feel happy and uh, I became aware of that when I said well I mean you know there's not just uh, what we have in front of us we have more like there's not just this life you know there's, mm -hmm. there's uh there's enlightenment there's things that we can reach uh, that's more helpful to us than material things you know and that's that's the light that we that we can choose to, to take for ourselves and to make it shine through us uh, in the world. So that's that's what I'm all about, you know. Okay. And you said in the in your uh, introduction that you also believe the dark is important. The dark is important. Yes. Yeah. Well, if, if I understood you correctly, you're you're talking about that um, we have light, right? Uh huh. We have dark. This is this is what you're talking about, right? Right. Okay, well, like, darkness is just an aspect of uh, light. It's the absence of light, but it's more like uh, the absorption, like, like absorption, absorption. Like, it absorbs light, and uh, it balances things out. You know, if we're always only light, if we're always only shining, uh, first of all, our bodies may not be able to take it. Uh, there needs to be rest, and that rest is darkness, and that darkness is the absorption of light and uh it doesn't have to be bad you know i mean you know when it's dark out you see the stars more because why mm -hmm. because there's they're further away and they, they they still shine there's always a part of us that still shines but you know the part of us that is uh absorptive is uh is the darkness and it's not bad it's we have to go both with light and dark you know we can't just be always light or just dark you know so that's that's really what I'm talking about, and you know, it's like when I speak about uh, you know, like no mind. Uh, when I go with no mind, I say, well, not everybody needs to do it, but those who their minds are going a bit, you know, like a hamster wheel nonstop, mm -hmm. well, they should be able to know that they can subside those thoughts uh, simply just by looking at them for starters. Uh, but like eventually. Uh, you can subside all thoughts and that's what some have called is either liberation or nirvana depending on you know what you do afterwards but uh just the fact that you stop all the thoughts in your mind mm -hmm. more uh more open more linked with the heart so that's, okay. what, that's what i'm that's what i'm teaching so, somewhat these are teachings that have been around for thousands of years uh and uh you know, now I believe that more than ever people need those because, you know, when you go on the streets, maybe you've noticed this yourself, Julia, like you go in a, in a, in a mall, a shopping mall or a restaurant or something, and people are very nervous, you know, and my understanding of this is they're going from one thought to the next, never stopping, you know, so mm -hmm. if you can sort of show them that they can uh, slow down those thoughts and when there's a space between the last thought and the next the space in between you can go in there and kind of prolong that a bit you know 
And first, if it, at first, it, it's more like forceful. It's more like you're forcing the gap to stay open longer. But eventually, uh, you can just be in the zone without forcing anything. You just have no thoughts, you know. So that's that's very profound, and I think it could be used very well uh, around the world and in many different uh, situations, you know. And how do you get to that point? Do you have a, any tips? <laughs> Yeah, well, one tip is, uh, first of all, you first have to start by looking at your thoughts just to know that they're there. You know, if you're always acting them out, uh, it's going to be hard to, uh, to, 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 to do anything about it. But it's like I've noticed that when you uh, bring consciousness to a thought, it becomes less important. You know, it becomes less, uh, it, it has less of a mind of its own. It becomes kind of, uh, under your wing for a little while and then you can guide it to, to subside itself not forcing it but just shining more consciousness more light to it mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you have to do you know like a certain degree of uh, work on that because like um, if you think you can just watch thoughts for an afternoon and then you'll have no mind that's kind of uh, thinking ahead you know a bit too far but like if you know that you can look at them and you just play as if you're a child uh, playing and just having fun with the thoughts and just looking at them and not judging, not condescending, uh, condescending, not doing anything bad. Uh, you just look at them. Well, eventually you'll notice, you'll notice yourself that there are gaps between mm -hmm. when one thought ends and when another thought begins. And that is really the, uh, um that's really the entry point for no mind you know like uh once you abide in that zone it's like you're not disconnected you're so connected to the world but the the thoughts are not so uh so important anymore you know they happen but you get to choose which ones you follow you're not following just any old thought you know mm-hmm okay and then i just have to add this and then when you become at, at a certain point you become more spontaneous spontaneous with yourself because you're acting from the heart that's really why no mind is important because it lets you go into the heart you know um and uh once you're in the heart well you get to uh to be almost free all the time you know uh, cool. you, all, you, have to, you have to be aware of it that's really what i'm talking about you know? that awareness yeah, that awareness of you being free anyways you know and you learned all that just from reading uh, I learned that from reading. I had a few masters, uh, uh, but main, mainly I was, I mean, I, I've been to Buddhist centers and things like that, but um, that was my youth in the spiritual journey. But lately it's been pretty much on my own and, uh, you know, like reading books or watching uh, masters on, on TV or on the internet and, uh and so to speak, I haven't been completely self-taught, but I like to read a lot. So I, I like to meditate and think about things. And, um, but it's been, this has been a journey that's been uh, taking this form in the last maybe five, six years. But it, it really started like uh, 10 years ago when I wanted to become enlightened. And I said, I have to pursue that path, even though there's not so many masters around these days. You know, you can't just go to the village and ask for the master and say, hey, what's up? I'm wondering about no mind. You really have to read about it or talk, see videos about it because there's good videos on the on, uh -huh. on the, on the internet. And uh, you, you see those videos and then you relate it to yourself. It's always just about yourself. What does it mean to you? You know, maybe I'm talking to you and right now no mind means nothing to you and you're scared because you don't want to be no mind. Well, don't don't go that route, go some other route, you know? Um, but there's always thousands of routes that lead always to light and, uh, to the outer aspect also of darkness, you know? Okay. Cool. So that's, that's what I've been, uh, that's what I've been working on. And I had my tea just before you called and I'm, uh, I'm all ready to uh, go for round two here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when you get a client, you, what, how does a session look? Well, the session looks, I mean, you know, like there's, 
there's ways of first of all you have to get someone to uh to come and um and talk to you and then you have to see what they want you know you could have a lot of techniques uh in your book uh but if they don't jive with the person it really doesn't matter what you're going to say you know because it won't it won't really jive with them but you have to kind of understand what I do is I try to, I talk to them just casually and I ask them about themselves and, and you know, I see like how they're doing and uh, what, what, what things they want to work on. And, but mainly I listen to where I think there's something that they are interested in, but they might not say it because maybe they're shy or uh, so I'll go, I'll go around the pot a bit. That's a French expression. Uh, but like if, if you go and uh, you you ask a few questions and you see what they're interested in then you formulate a teaching or a talk for them you know it has to be for them and, and then you're okay. very open you know and uh, it doesn't have to be just me talking it could be them uh, teaching me what they know about their spiritual lineage or uh, something like that you know but uh, it's, it's about finding what they need and then talking about that you know and did you join our um, website? The yeah, uh, yeah. you do you have a, a and that's where somebody could get a hold of you. Yeah, they they can get a hold of me uh, on your website. Uh, there's a there's a page there uh, under my name, Luke, and uh, that's it. So it's uh, the or I mean. I can maybe later send you a, a link to my, uh, to my email and uh, to my information. And, um, but that's, 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 that's how they could reach me. Yeah. Okay. I want to invite you and all of our listeners to uh, subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash Julia Widup. And I will let you know when I upload this interview and others, whenever anybody's on the show. Okay, well, thank you is, so much. Yeah, is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners? Uh, no, I think uh, that's, uh, that's that's all I had to say there. Um, okay. I'm glad you invited me on your show, so thank you so much. You know. Well, thank you for being on the show, and we'll see you on the website. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye.